Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert, October 9th, 2021. And here we are over in the garage. Remember I had a bunch of those 4x4s leaned up against the wall here uh, that I got from taking the pallets apart from Don. And they were cluttering up a room in here. And I still got to get some of this other small lumber out of here. Get my tools put away and cleaned up. And and organize a little bit in here. Because uh, it's just way, way out of organization. And it needs to be corrected. I like things organized where I don't have to hunt for half a day to find something I need. So anyway, where did all that go? Well... Let's take a walk around the corner here and look in here. Oh my gosh, look, there's a loft up there. Yep, I put that loft in today and took all that lumber that was in there and moved it up on top of there. And I've got a bunch of cardboard here that I need to get put away too because uh, I usually save cardboard like this in case I have to make a template or, or, of some kind. I can cut it out of the cardboard and use it. But this stuff's been sitting here for now for almost four years. So it's going to turn into ash. I'll burn it up and turn it into ash so that I can uh, mix it in with my compost. Or another thing you do with ashes, you can pour it down your um, outhouse and uh, it helps... Uh, break break up the uh, the waste and also helps keep the odors down so that's another tip you can use anyway yeah i got that all put up there and uh this solar battery and this is from like 2016 uh from harbor freight and i've had it in here just running lights and stuff off of a couple of solar panels and an old Harbor Freight controller up there on a shelf. And, oh, what's that sign say? Uh, I guess that doesn't mean me. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, the battery was not holding a charge anymore. So it, I tried putting it on my uh, repair unit here, my repair charger, and it says battery failure. So the battery is bad. Can't be used. So I will uh, take that apart and uh, set that to one side. And the next time I go into um, California batteries, I'll bring that down there and get my uh, core charge for it. Because they, I don't know what they do with them, cut them open and repair them or whatever. But I'll get rid of that one. I don't need it hanging around here. All right, so I decided that uh, because I had originally talked about a DIY transfer switch that I was going to fabricate using that uh, that small breaker panel and uh, a couple of breakers, I had some people interested who wanted to see how that was done. So I'm heading over here right now to the table, and we'll talk about how that would have been done all right so I've installed the breakers here now this is for uh, this would be for a 240 volt system if you were going to do it with a 120 volt system uh, off of your smaller generator then you would use um, single pole breakers now these let's see if I can get one up here okay these are two breakers in one and they have a connection across the two uh, switches so that they both operate in unison so if you were using a 120 it would be uh, two separate ones like this you couldn't have a bar between them because you don't want them both on or both off at the same time okay so here we are, this, is, this would be line one or hot one, and this would be line two or hot two. On a 240 volt system, you have two hot wires, 
okay? So on a basic panel, you also have room for two hot wires. So you, each other unit, um, this one is connected to one and three. This one is connected to two and four. So it splits them up so you can do a 240 or a 120 on, on the same type of panel. This one is the neutral bar. Okay, and the neutral is usually the white wire. In the hot wires for these, normally they would either be two blacks or two reds or, or a black and a red. Okay, so that's, that would tell you that it's a 240 volt system. This one down here is a ground bar, and it's attached to the can itself so that it grounds the can. So, the way this would work is you would take a wire from uh, line one and line two, or hot one and hot two, and those would go into your existing breaker panel to um, the bus bars in there, line one, line two, inside of your other panel, okay? So what, what you're doing is you're, you're making sure that this is connected, this panel is connected to them. Now you'd also run a neutral, a heavy neutral, from this block to the your, your um, cabin panel. And this is for off-grid system. This is not an on-grid system. Don't try this on grid because you're going to have power coming into your house panel and when you go to hook up wires and stuff like that, unless you're a qualified electrician, knowing what you're doing, you could get electrocuted. So this is for if you're an off-grid system. All right. So your neutral would go into your existing house panel to the neutral bar or the neutral connector in your indoor panel. The ground would go from this ground bar to your inside panel ground bar. And that's usually a green wire. Neutrals will always be white and ground wires are usually either green or bare. They don't have uh, uh, a insulation on them. Okay, so one and two, lines one and two would be black or, or red. And those would go the, from these two blocks would connect to your main panels, line one and two. White wire, which is your neutral, would connect from here to your main uh, cabin panel on your neutral bar. Ground would go to your ho house panel or your cabin uh, panel uh, ground bar. So you got all of those connected. Okay, now you got your two breakers. And on the breakers, they got connections, on, two connections on these. All right, so the incoming that you would have from, let's say, your, your generator. I'll start with the generator down here at the bottom, okay? So your generator, you would put two of the hot wires coming from the generator, which is hot one and hot two, or line one, line two, would go into your um, breaker. Your ground wire would connect to the ground, and your neutral wire would connect to this little neutral bar right here, okay? Now, that one's also hooked up and set. So you, you got your switch off, so it can't put any in power, in power in with the switch off. The next one, this would be from your inverter. So your inverter would come in line one and line two. And again, this is for a split phase inverter. So uh, line one and line two would go in here. Neutral would go into the neutral bar and ground would go into the ground bar. Okay. Now you've got this one it would be your um, inverter power coming in. And this one would be your generator power coming in. Now neither one of these can make connection with your main panel in your cabin until you turn the switch on. So you always want to have one switch on and one switch off. You don't ever want to have them both on or both off. If they're both off, you're getting no power at all. So let's say we're going to run off the inverter as normal. We would turn this switch on. This one remains off. Okay, now that's allowing your power to come in through this breaker, 
go in through the bus bars and go out to your other panel. So now your inverter is controlling your cabin. So you decide you want to run off the generator for a while and separate the batteries from the cabin. You're just going to run off the generator itself. So you come over here, you shut off your inverter wires, and you turn on your generator, and that's it. Well, you make sure you start your generator first. You always start your generator, then put a load on it, and you always take the load off and then shut off your generator. So let's say we're going to go on generator, and we were on our inverter. We're going to shut the inverter off, start the generator, and then turn on the generator switch. Now the wires going into here are going to feed the bus bars as, as they need to be and go into your panel inside and you're running off the generator. And you've eliminated your battery bank and your inverter out of the system. It's completely out of the system. The problem with this is that you don't get battery charge on your battery bank using a, a cutoff switch like this or a transfer switch. You would, um, you would have to plug a separate battery charger into your generator and put the terminals on the positive and negative of your batteries and charge your batteries. Now, of course, if you're running a... Um, uh, 24 or 48 volt system you can't use a regular um, battery charger on that because a regular battery charger is for 12 volt systems okay so um, this would work best for 24 48 36 volt all of those higher voltages but you wouldn't use it if you uh, um, had a 12 volt system because you want to charge so the Ames inverter that I have in here actually has a battery charger built right into it. And what's nice about it is that inside of the uh, system, it's got all the sensors it needs. So I don't have to worry about shutting one switch off and, uh, and turning another switch on. All I'm going to do is start my generator, plug in that wire, and instantly... The inverter will um, recognize that there's um, 240 volts input going in from AC and it's going to shut off the um, inverter side. So the inverter is off now and it's going to work it as a, a charger and charge the batteries up to full charge all while still powering the cabin through the AC connection. So it, it's a better setup this way. And that's all I can say about that. All right, well, that's all I've got except uh, an update on federal excuses. Yeah, the, the FedEx, the EX does not stand for express because in no, no way at all do, do they deliver by express. It stands for excuses. So you, you keep not getting your package and you'll keep getting excuses every time you call them. So the update today. They, yesterday they told me they wouldn't do anything until I contacted the seller and had the seller contact them and confirm the address to where it's got to ship to. And I said, why do you need that? I mean, I could tell you right now that the address that you have on your paper right there is correct. So why do you need them to tell you it's correct when it already is correct? And he said, well, I don't have that information. I said, of course you don't, because you're a dumbass. Okay, now tell me, why did your driver go to the same wrong address four times in a row after he already went the first time? I don't know about you, but if I drive somewhere and it's the wrong address, I don't keep going back there hoping it's going to change. It just doesn't work that way. You'd have to be a dumbass to do that. And yes, he has to be a dumbass. So no, why is he going to a wrong spelling, a completely wrong spelling? Where's he getting his information from? 
the supervisor? Okay, let me talk to a supervisor. So they put me on with a supervisor. So now the supervisor is going to call me back again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. And they did this every time they've done this to me. Every single time for every delivery I've ever gotten from FedEx that's been delayed and didn't get here on time. Every time was on a holiday weekend. And yes, Monday is Columbus Day, so it's a three-day weekend. And they get, just told me, oh, well, you're going to have to wait until Tuesday. I said, no, I'm not. It was supposed to be delivered on the 16th. This is, this is already gone into the weekend. You guys were supposed to have delivered. Your driver has to be a real dumbass to keep going back to the same place, hoping that the address is going to change or a new house will sp spring up. Why does he keep going back to the same place? Why doesn't he just say, there's something wrong here, punch the address into the computer, it'll show you exactly where it is, and then you go there. So apparently the, the supervisor assures me that they'll get this squared away at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. And I told uh, the supervisor apparently was not with um, the Bloomington, California facility. He was somewhere else. So he's going to have a conference call with all three of us on there tomorrow with the driver to get this thing squared away. And they have my phone number so they can call and say, okay, where are you? Which is totally ridiculous because all they have to do is go to either Google Earth, Google Maps, or Apple Maps. Any one of those will show you the exact location. It'll show you the house. It'll show you the driveway. It'll show you the name of the street. Everything will be there. So why is there a problem? And I had this dumbass um, shipping manager on there today who says, well, I can't do anything until you have the, uh, sh the shipper or the seller contact us to change the address. I said, they're... they're we're not going to change the address. The address that's on the paper in front of you is correct. He goes, no, it's spelled wrong. And it says Diana, and, and you say it's supposed to be Dana. I said, no, it's Diana, not Dana. What part of that are you having trouble understanding? Oh, my God. I was totally frustrated. And you can tell in my voice, this is ridiculous. I said, you know what? You guys have done this to me for the last seven shipments in two years, coming from you guys on a holiday weekend. You never deliver on time, and then you tell me I have to wait until after the holiday to get my package. That's unacceptable. Totally unacceptable. So, next thing I'm going to do is, after this all gets settled, I'm going to start a campaign to boycott FedEx. And I'm going to go online and, and post videos and do whatever I have to do. I'm going to call people. I'm going to call um, the news companies and all of that. And I'm going to have them do a complete story on how inefficient and inadequate FedEx is. And I'm going to tell them that I'm starting a campaign to have all companies who ship items in the United States to quit using FedEx. The... Uh, when I spoke to the shipper yesterday, the people I bought the item from, they said that they do not use FedEx. But because this is an Ames product, all they are are a, um, a seller for Ames. And they, they contact Ames and Ames ships the product out. And Ames will not, even though they've said we've had lots of complaints that FedEx doesn't deliver, Ames will not change their shipper. They, they want to stay with FedEx. And uh, I just don't understand that. But anyway, I just got a text just now from FedEx. So let's see what's going to happen next. I'm going to close this one off. It's gone a little bit long today. But thank you for staying with me. Thank you for listening to my rants. Don't forget comments and questions and all that stuff down below. Don't forget thumbs up right down there thumbs up yeah give me a thumbs up like my videos don't forget to subscribe and share g bear signing off